Hey, y'all. So obviously not ideal um, that you have to be watching this, but my wife started getting sick tonight, and uh, she is really not doing very well, just throwing up. I think it's some kind of food poisoning. Um, and I really felt like I needed to take uh, tomorrow, I guess it's today for y'all, it's kind of weird, uh, take today off um, to take care of her and Emerson. But obviously not a great day to do that because I think saying goodbye is, is very important. And yeah, closing, closing out is, is something that I take very seriously uh, and, is, and is difficult to do at the same time. So I'm not sure there is a good way to do it. Um, but anyway, I just I wanted to spend just a couple minutes doing two things. And, and first off is just to say thank you. Um, in so many different ways, y'all have impacted my life over this 10 months and in ways that you don't even fully know. Um, you know, whether it's through journal prompts where you've been honest about things and I've, I've gotten to, to see y'all wrestle through things and to be reminded what a warrior is uh, and all these books we read about heroes and warriors. And then I read these journal prompts and I'm reminded of what it actually looks like. Um, or whether it's, you know, you guys, uh, loving each other. Well, uh, I, I see that I really do. I, I look around the hallways, um, when I'm in the lunchroom, uh, you know, when we're in class and I see people having a conversation that would not normally be talking and I see people, uh, you know, just, just doing little acts of service, uh, in the lunchroom, noticing each other moving towards the person that's hurting. Um, I've seen y'all demonstrate that. So many of y'all do it again and again. And so when I say that I've seen what it is to be a warrior, I've seen what it is to to suffer well. I've seen what it is to rejoice with those who rejoice. I've seen what it is to cry with those who cry. And I've seen all of those in y'all. Um, I mean that very seriously. And so I just want to say thank you. I take that stuff home. Y'all have called me into a higher uh into a higher state, challenged me uh, in so many ways that you don't fully know and I can't fully tell you. So thank you uh, for doing life with me this past 10 months um, and just the way that y'all have loved me well. Um, and I also just, I want to leave you guys with, with what I call a blessing for the road. Um, and you should have a little bookmark. What, what I do, what I try and do every year is think okay we we spent 10 months of, of doing life together how do you how do you end that um well what would i want uh a class of young men and women to to take away as they leave sophomore english um and and head onward into their lives right like I, i've been able to travel this stretch of road with you which has just been so beautiful and now you head on um and so I, I write this, it's, it's not, um, obviously it's, it's not mind blowing. It, it's really just, I call it a blessing for the road, uh, or a prayer, right? Read it as a prayer from me to you, um, as, as you head onward in this adventure and as Lord willing, you travel further and further into the high countries. So I'm just going to read this. I'd love if you would read it along and, and just hear this as my prayer for you guys as a blessing as you travel on from sophomore English. So I call it a story of a life or the story of a life. Um, and it starts out with a quote from John Bunyan from Program's Progress. He says, what can I expect twixt this in our journey's end? As this year has reminded us, life is a journey full of twists and turns. We are not called to live as settlers, but as pilgrims, journeying, if slowly, ever towards the truth. And every journey starts with leaving what you once thought was home. The call to adventure is a daily one, and one that you are allowed to ignore. But the treasure only waits for those who choose to face the guarding dragon, to cross the threshold into the wild. This choice is yours, but it's not a journey you'll ever travel alone. If you do choose to accept this call, 
you'll find the forest dark, the caverns deep, and every shadow sheltering hungry creatures, looking to devour those who wander off the path. Stay the path, even though it's thin, winding, and at times difficult to even see. You will have moments on the mountaintop when you are able to see clearly above the mist, but most of life is lived in the mist, in the questions, the confusion, and the unknown. And you will have to navigate by glimpses, by tastes that leave you always wanting more. Trust that longing that signs up and stay the path. At times, you will inevitably find yourself surrounded by dragons, goblins, and creatures of the dark. Face them, but remember that you never do battle alone. Evil is a wide way, but the paths are cheats and deceptions, and even the narrow way may lead you straight into the dragon's lair. Even our own halls need a form of cleansing we were never meant to complete on our own, and we have free access to the only warrior who can. Stay the path, pilgrim, stay the path. But perhaps most dangerous of all, at times you will be summoned off the trail with siren song by those who sell the reflection as if it were the reality. Beware. Men are good at twisting truth, but it will not satisfy. The reflections, though from the light, are not the light itself. Remember that your glimpses of good are but a taste of the one goodness, and the lines in your life matter because there is an artist with a complete picture. Never stop longing for this full picture. Look into the reflection, and then look up to seek the mountain. Don't jump in after the reflection and drown. On this journey, you will have teachers, mentors, and traveling companions to meet you at the bus stop, let you lean on them, and direct you to the path. But it is your decision alone to submit yourself to Christ's mercy, to grow solid. Even now, you are at the edge of a forest, and it is your choice to say, on we go, or cling to the comfort of the dream feast that never fills and only makes you more ghostly. You are what you eat. When it grows darkest, remember that being found requires you admit to being lost. Stay the path. Thankfully, when you find you are lost or surrounded, look up and you will find a lamp to guide you. I really believe that. Look up at it, renew your eyesight in its light, and then get back on the path. Follow the thread. It never leaves, even when you aren't sure you believe in it. Truth is not dependent on our beliefs. There's a thread that promises to lead you home if you will submit to let it guide you, even when you cannot always see it clearly. And lastly, traveler, remember this. You feel homesick because you are away from home. Do not fall prey to those, however intelligent, who tell you that this world is your home. Deeply feel the Zeinzucht, the cosmic homesickness, and keep praying, looking, and longing for the Holy Land. The Holy One is present with you now. Eternal life is here with Him, though we wait for its fullness. Over all shadows rides the sun, and one day, sooner than you may think, it will rise completely in the high country. Follow the thread, and one day I will see you there. And I end with a quote from George MacDonald, because I love George MacDonald. Looking up, they saw each other in tears. They were each longing after the country whence the shadows fell. You must throw yourself in, he said. It is the only way. So y'all, that's my prayer for you. I pray that you would take that, um, that you would keep it, right? That that these might be some things that you remember as you look back on sophomore year. Uh, and most importantly, I just hope you remember that what my hope is for 10th grade is that you've gotten a taste of something beautiful. You've gotten a taste of the one goodness who I believe is Christ. Um, I hope that if anything happens in sophomore year, you've tasted something higher, you've tasted something better, and that from here on out, that might have directed you on a, on a journey into the high countries um, where you are always getting more because God is infinite, right? And there's infinite joy. 
So much love for all of you. Um, on a no, you know what? Let's just end on that. No, let's not end on that because you also need to write this essay on Canvas. There is a document that has a sample claim and some sample topic sentences. So if you're struggling with like, okay, what could my topic sentences look like on Canvas under the essay where it says submit essay, you'll see this. It's uh, it's actually Lily Saunders. So thank you, Lily. Um, you'll also see this document, which has different uh, stems for introducing evidence and also transitioning between evidence since you're using multiple uh, sources, right? Multiple texts and moving between them. So there's some stuff down here about how to like say, well, while one person says this, this person also agrees when they say. And then there's also a sample introduction that I wrote uh, just to give you an idea of how you want to introduce the idea, then introduce the three texts that you're going to use, and then close with your claim. So you can look through all these on Canvas. Um, and I hope that having a little bit of extra time to uh, do your essay, um, which if you didn't know that, check your email, uh, will be helpful. So work well. Know that you are loved and uh, that you are prayed for. And um, travel well. And don't be a stranger. Come by and see me next week during finals. I'll be there. All right. See y'all.